My buddy Jacob invited me to join him and his family and their family friends at Ellington's on a trip down to the Keys for some spear fishing and just some good old flats fishing. And that's just something you don't pass up, man. I left home at four in the morning and drove down and our first day of the trip was all about some good spear fishing. First things first though, have to drop the shoes in the water and get it ready for the week. Good. Thank you, Jacob. See you soon. brought the hues back to the Ellington's place where we were staying for the week, but time to tie the hues off, hop into his Everglades, and hit the reefs for some good spear fishing, man. Now, a lot of people are probably surprised, because I've never really talked about it, but I grew up doing a lot more spear fishing than the inshore fishing that I do now. Okay, perfect. It had been a good minute though since I have really done some serious diving and have done any spear fishing so it took me a little bit to get my bearings but I mean it's not hard when you're surrounded by so much beautiful stuff. Pretty quick into the dive I saw a nice black grouper and uh, he was on to me pretty quick. I did however manage to keep up with them and finally chase them into a big coral head. But the head was just so giant, I, I, we were never able to find him. but he did blow out a big giant moray eel when he swam into the head, which is always cool to see. <laughs> While diving through schools of snapper and grunts and smaller groupers and smaller hogfish, we were always shooting any line fish that we saw, which are invasive species, and there's no limit, and they advise you to kill any that you see, and they also taste great. The Jenkins let me borrow one of their spear guns, and it's probably surprising, I have never even used a spear gun, because when we experience the Bahamas, it's illegal to use them, and that's where the majority of my experience came from, so I've always used slings and pole spears, so this is a new experience for me. Finally, after a couple of hours of diving, I saw a hogfish that was worth shooting. The limit has been bumped up to 16 inches, and this by was no means a giant, but he hit that mark perfectly, and, uh, and that was my first fish other than a line fish that we got into the boat. Like I said, it had been a minute since I really have done any spear fishing, and the reefs we were diving were just so full of life. But there's so much going on that I sometimes found myself having a hard time picking out, you know, grouper or hogfish and bigger snappers from all the thousands and thousands of fish that were on the reef.
After a solid session of diving on the Atlantic side, we decided to switch things up and go hit the Gulf. Now the Gulf is a totally different experience. You're diving in maybe six to 10 feet of water, but the clarity is much less, but the fish are way, way higher concentrated. There's a red in here, but he's like 19 or 20 maybe. the biggest barracuda I've ever seen down here. It's like six feet long. Can't look. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's still there, he's still there, he's still there. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> While everyone was busy, you know, shooting grouper and snapper and stuff like that, I was on a mission to just shoot as many line fish as I could because, well, that's what I was finding. What is really cool about diving on the Gulf and the dirtier water is that when you find something, it feels like this giant discovery. Now, Mr. Ellington dropped us in on the water in a place where he said there was a sunken boat and you kind of swim up on it and you're taken back that something is there hiding, but it's only an eight or so feet of water and it was just full of life. Ooh. I'll admit those groupers kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> As the day slowly closed out, we're checking rock piles and looking under ledges and seeing some grouper here and there. One of the guys with us, Garrett, had pinned a decent sized grouper into a rock. And he was not coming out of there, man. After a considerable team effort, Caleb and I managed to finally free the grouper from the rock and ended up being a pretty decent sized black and our final fish for the day. Well, the, the real fun has come to an end. We had a very long day spearfishing. We shot a handful of mangroves, two blacks, one red, one hog, and some lion fish. We are going to start filleting these bad boys and uh, get some juicy, juicy fillets. It has been a long day. It was really fun diving. I have not done diving like that in a very long time, and it was just awesome being able to kick it around the water with the boys. But we need to get to work and start slicing up some of these fish. The fish cleaned up by Jacob and I. Only one thing left to do was to uh, cook it up and eat. Jason handled the fish while Rocky and Garrett cooked up some sides for us. And it's cool when you get a big group of people together because it really becomes a team effort.
Fish can be a weird thing because people have such a wide variety of opinion on it, but one thing you can't go wrong with when you have a group is just a classic fish fry. Tempura batter, a nice panko breadcrumb drip, and they're in the fryer. A board of grouper, snapper, and hogfish, and it's time for a good feed. Keys is a pretty magical place and getting to hop in the water and do some spear fishing on day one was such a blessing, but got a lot of fishing ahead of us, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to the rest of these Keys series. Till next time, see ya.